Talking today on um, stewardship, that's our series that we're in at the moment. And um, today we've got uh, time, stewardship of time, stewardship of talents, and stewardship of treasure, which in anybody's book is at least three sermons, not one. Uh, but hey, we're going to go for it in one and uh, see how we get on uh, together today. God has given us all that we need and more. Do you know that? The question is, will we squander it on the trivial or will we invest it in the eternal? That's the big question that I'm asking today and in many ways we're asking over this entire series. How we use the things that God has given us, I believe, will determine something of our joy and something of his glory. Amounts of joy for you and I and amounts of glory that he should receive through what we do. Today we're going into 1 Peter we're going to read from chapter 4. I'm going to go straight into the passage here. We're going to read from verses 7 uh, to 11. It will come up on the screen. Um, but if you want to turn to it, then feel free to do so. It says this, The end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and of sober mind so that you may pray. Above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Here's the key verse for us today. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do it as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides, so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Let's unpack this a little bit. The end is coming. Paul is, uh, Peter is uh, talking to the church there. They're in some sense of persecution. It means they're suffering for their faith. It's not an easy time. And he reminds them that this won't be forever. This, your life is, is but a mist, he's saying here. And um, it's going to come to an end. Either he will end it or our time will come to pass and both of those will come sooner than we think. So he's saying, be alert. Be aware. Be self-controlled, as it were. Know what you're doing, and perhaps more importantly, who you are becoming. So, be aware, so that what? So you can pray, so you can love, so that you can share hospitality, have people into your home. They were probably scattered at this point, so it wouldn't have been such like a gathered church like we're doing right now. And so the home was crucial. I'm interested that he picked out these three kind of priorities for them at this point. Let's unpack it some more. Who, in verse 10, are we talking about these gifts that God gives to us? Who is it that he's talking to? It's each of us. It's everyone. There's no one in this room and no one who is a follower of Jesus who is left out in terms of having gifts from God. It's to all those who were scattered in Asia Minor in that day. And it's to every Christ follower since. What's the principle here? The principle is that we all have something to steward. We found that out last week. So what are we stewarding? Well, verse 10 
tells us that it's gifts in various forms that we have received by his grace. I love that. We don't deserve these gifts. We don't warrant them from our good lives. No, he determines them and gives them by his grace. What's the principle here? The principle is that God is the owner. He owns all things. He's also the giver. He gives generously to us. And we are to steward. These things are on loan for us in the time that we have to steward faithfully for his glory. Why should we steward them well? Where's the emphasis here? Well, towards other people. Did you see that? It's to others. 1 Corinthians 12, 7 same, says the same thing. These gifts, these Holy Spirit gifts, are given for the common good. Genesis 12, 2, God gives a promise to Abraham. He says, I'm going to bless you. He says, I'm going to make your nation just incredible so that you can be a blessing. He gives to us, here's the principle, for the benefit of others. It's all about others. <laughs> it's all about people. It's all about using what we've got by God's grace to build up, encourage, to strengthen, to bless, to honor, to love, to share hospitality, and to pray with others and for others. And I just want to take a moment just to thank you as a church community for using your time, your talents, and your treasures for his glory. I mean, the only reason we are where we are is because you have been obedient, many of you, faithful and obedient over many years, stewarding faithfully what God has given to you so that we've had a massive impact on lots of people and that he is glorified. I believe there is eternal rewards <laughs> for many of us, many of you, most of you, unseen, not on a platform, serving God faithfully. Thank you so much. I'm gonna look at these three, time, talents, and treasure. We're gonna dig in a little bit deeper. We're gonna see how these principles work out. First one, time. How are you stewarding the time that God has given you to serve others? Have you ever had those days where <clears throat> you've just packed your diary way too much and then unexpected things come in on top and you are running like a crazy man from one thing to the other? You're driving at more than the speed limit you're trying to think about things that, that are coming when you should be in the moment. What's the problem here? The problem is for too many of us in our culture, we don't even have time to do the basics. Somebody wrote a book called Too Busy to Pray. Too busy to love others. Too wrapped up in our own heads and in our moments and our stuff that we're not aware even of other people, let alone God's presence. Have you ever said, like I've said, there's just not enough hours in the day? <laughs> but you know what? If we had more hours in the day, we'd fill them with the same old stuff that we do already. The reality is, for many of us, we are too busy to live emotionally healthy and spiritually rich lives. Even for our own walk with God, let alone for the blessing of others. What does the Bible say? Well, let's have a look at Ephesians 5, 15 and 16. It says this, be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, we've heard that before, but as wise. Remember, be alert, be sober-minded. Why? Make the most of every opportunity because the days 
are evil. How do you use your God-given time? Is it for his glory or is it empty leisure and trivial pursuits? And I don't mean the board game. Anyone still play Trivial Pursuit? <laughs> Do you know that the average UK adult watches five hours of TV a day? TV and streaming content, that's a third of their waking hours. Do you know that the average person uses social media two hours a day? If you're slightly younger, you're probably up to three hours. If you're slightly older, you're around 1.5 hours. This is average. Do you know that adolescent boys spend two to five hours a day gaming? These things are not wrong. And some adolescent men who are still gaming. <laughs> These things are not wrong, but they determine who we are becoming and what we are doing. A guy called Charles Chu, he said, we all have the time we need. The scary part that we ignore is that we're too addicted, too weak, and too distracted to do what we all know is important. It's like a punch to the stomach, that one, isn't it? This is going to be tough this morning, all right? You might realize that already. Charles Chu goes on to say that if you, um, if you combine all your TV watching and all your social media in the space of a year, um, the amount of time that that would add up, for the average reader, you could have read 1,600 books in a year. I just find it incredible. So I want to give you some practical helps. I can't give you everything, but I can give you something. First thing, let's slow down. We need to slow down. We need to practice being slower, driving the speed limit. Some of the things I've been doing since the turn of the year, um, with the help of this book that I read at the end of the year, uh, the Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. Such a good book. We've recommended it before. If you haven't read it yet, I just want to encourage you, in this season, in this series, get hold of it. Give it a read. It's fantastic. I've been um, just, in my quiet time, rather than just reading and then just praying, I've been consciously setting a time aside for listening. That sounds obvious, doesn't it? But it's revolutionized my prayer life it's revolutionized my walk with God. It's not that I haven't done it before, it's just that I needed to have a new season of hearing. I've been getting to meetings earlier rather than skimping by, just on the moment and running in. I've consciously been working with my diary. It's just a very practical thing to do. Number two, orient your time, orientate your time around what matters, or even better, who matters. We need to eliminate and redeem our time for the glory of God. Eliminate the trivial and eliminate hurry. If you, are, if you watched one hour of TV a day, you could swap that to reading your Bible for the same amount of time and you read the whole thing in six months. In two hours social media, you could have had a two hour social meal with someone else in our church community. In 20 minutes, GTA, P-U-G-B, or C-O-D, Call of Duty, or maybe that's not your thing, that's not your problem, they might be Candy Crush, <laughs> gaming on your phone, in that 20 minutes, waiting at a bus stop, you could have prayed for all your unsafe friends and family. God wants us to redeem our time. I believe God will minister to some of you today who you know that you're on borrowed time and frequently you're out of time. And he wants to redeem your time for his glory and your joy. 
Number two, talents. How are you stewarding your talents from God to serve others? We've all got something, right? I've already hit that principle. I just want to underline it. If you don't have anything, if you feel like you don't have any talents or gifts this morning, you are a believing a lie of the enemy, and he wants to scrap that lie over your life today because you have been gifted. You have been made by him for his glory, and he has something for you. What's the problem? Well, often we don't know what they are. We don't know... uh, what they are or how to find out what they are. Or maybe you know what they are, but you're just not using. Maybe it's fear that's stopping you. Maybe it's disappointment that we've heard already today. Here's the problem. You see, when it comes to gifts, if you don't use them, we all lose out. If you're not using your gift, I am losing. We all do, because your gift is valuable, and it has a contribution to make in this incredible church body. Romans 12 highlights this. It says, for just as each of us has one body with many members, that's us, these members do not have all the same function, no. So in Christ, though many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others, we have different gifts according to the grace of to each of us. There's his grace again given by him to us for others. He goes on to talk about the gift of giving, generosity. Do it generously. He goes on to talk about the the gift of leadership. Do it diligently. He goes on to talk about the the gift of mercy. Do it cheerfully. There's lists of gifts all through the, well, not all through, but in the New Testament, you can find them. He's looking for faith, He's looking for faith so we don't fall into the trap of the parable of the talents that we read in Matthew 25 where he's given us stuff and rather than using it for his glory and our joy, we bury it. We put it in the the sand. Rather, he wants to, he wants you to use it. He wants you to be faithful in the small things so he can multiply it and you. He'll multiply your gift and he'll multiply you as you use it for his glory so that others can be benefited to build his church and extend his kingdom. Practical helps. 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, have a look at the list of gifts. Ask God by his spirit to reveal which one might be for you. Ask other people what they see in you. Take a survey. There's lots of surveys out there. We put one on the bulletin not long ago. I might put it in this week just so you can go there and you can find out how God has gifted you both spiritually and naturally. Our natural talents and gifts are to be used too for his glory. Second way to practically get involved in these is to fan them into flame. Get into a context where you can use them. Maybe it's just signing up to a serving team just to get involved in community and just to play a part. I tell you, whilst you're doing that, you'll begin to understand more of who God has gifted you to be. Maybe it's getting into community group, mixing with others, life group, so that you can use what God has given you. Maybe it's leadership to step up into. Maybe it's contributing on a Sunday. There's all sorts of ways that you can fan your flame in to gift. I, um, before COVID, I was in a, a commission um, kind of prayer and fasting. So commission is the group of churches that we belong to, praying with other leaders. And I felt God just give me a word. And I had this word. It was about um, my wife's engagement ring, which she's lost the diamond in that ring uh, twice now. And I've replaced it twice. At least I think she's losing it. Maybe she's creating another ring. <laughs> anyway, I felt God speak to me about this. And I, I just thought, that's a bit weird. Just quite specific. I felt this word two more times and no more. And I wrestled with it a little bit. And as I do when God speaks to you, as you do, if you feel like you're hearing God. And then I decided I've got to go for this. And I went to share it. Anyway, I thought nothing of it. 
And I thought, oh, well, that just, you know, as it was, probably misheard. At the end of the day, a guy came up to me. He said, you know what? Your word was for me. He said, my daughter has had two miscarriages. And she's just got pregnant again. And the whole family is fearful that she's going to miscarry again. And so your word of two times and no more. I feel like God has given me a faith and a promise to hold on to for that. And uh, COVID came and went, and I was like, that's great. I'm glad it had some kind of something somewhere. It landed. Thank you, Jesus. And I didn't hear anything about it. And I've often thought about that word. I've often thought about that girl and her pregnancy. I've often prayed for her, even though I don't even know her and never met her. A couple of years went by through COVID. In January this year, I met that same guy. He said, my daughters have the baby. He says, the miscarriages are done. And I just want to encourage you. God has gifted you. He wants you to step out in faith because you just never know what he wants to do with you and through you. Okay, lastly, treasure. How are you stewarding your treasures from God to serve others? And when I'm talking treasures, I'm talking money, but I'm also talking possessions. What's the problem here with our culture? The problem is that we're being sold a lie that the more that we have, the happier we will be. Do you, do you see that lie? The more we have, the happier you will be. We get our meaning from the things that we have and the things that we consume. Meaning in life by spending money we often don't have on things, stuff we really probably don't need. I'm not saying it's wrong to spend money. I'm not saying it's wrong to enjoy things. I'm saying it's when that becomes the, our identity and we don't have anything for anyone else because we're so consumed with our own stuff. The problem isn't really the stuff. It's more our insatiable kind of desire for more <laughs> and looking for satisfaction outside of God. Do you know, the average person will see six to 10,000 ads each day. I just find that incredible. I really do. Twice as many ads are being flung at us now as it was in 2007. What does the Bible say? <laughs> this is tough. It says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, Matthew 6, where moths and vermin destroy, where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. According to the Bible and society over thousands and thousands of years, all that we need is food in our stomachs, clothing on our backs, and shelter over our heads, and God. I thought I'd better add that in. Luke 12, life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. God promises in Philippians 4, verse 9, that Paul's talking, he said, I've, I've known the secret of contentment, both in plenty and in little. And he says to, uh, to the church in Philippi, he says, he says, I'm so grateful that you've, you've come on board and you've, you've given into this ministry. And he says, I want you to know that my God, the God that I serve, has riches beyond everything all things, and he will not let you go short. He will provide for you. This is the promise for us today. He will provide for you. You can never outgive God. He always is blessing in to our lives. I was just counting my own blessings. Here's, this is a practical solution to this. When was the last time you counted your blessings? I think we need to do it daily, definitely weekly. In the last month, okay, 
We had um, my daughter's birthday, she's 19. We thought it'd be great to hire a beach hut, do something different. We put a note out on Southbourne, Sobo, anyone got a beach hut? A friend of ours came back from school way back, said, oh, we've got a beach hut, you know, I'll give it you cheap. And she said, oh, look, there's no one in it for that day. There's no one in it for the rest of the weekend. You can have it for the whole weekend. Fantastic. We enjoyed the beach hut. It's the blessing of God. Maisie, at university, we're praying for a job for her. She's just like, she's doing a tough course. There's not much time for, for work. And she was just in a supermarket wearing her, she's a perf- performing arts, she's wearing her hoodie. It's got the name of the college on there. Some woman comes up to her and says, you wouldn't um, be interested in teaching my two girls how to dance. Uh, I'll pay well, I'll come and pick you up, and maybe just once or twice a week. I mean, what a blessing that is. It's incredible. She's getting money, it means we don't have to give it to her. <laughs> this is in the same month. Jacob, he's started dating someone. His, the, the, his girlfriend, that... He's just given. He's got loads of bikes. He just wanted to get rid of one. He gave him a bike. This bike is over a thousand pounds worth of, of bike, and he's just give it, given it to him. It's incredible. He needs a new bike, so he's got one now. <laughs> so good to count your blessings. Do you know why he gives to us? He gives to us not to increase our standard of living but to increase our standard of giving. The blessings of God given to us to give away to others so they might understand him some more and that he would get all the glory. We are blessed to bless. A couple of quick helps. Take some stuff to the tip. Declutter. Simplify your life. Number two, budget well and practice giving things away. It's not easy. It's a real struggle. We had too many bikes in the shed because we kept getting given bikes. It wasn't that long ago that I got given a bike. And before now, we've had kids' bikes just given to us. You know, I'm grateful that God gives us bikes. I'd prefer it if it was sports cars. But anyway, <laughs> at the moment, we're on bikes. There's too many bikes in the shed, so I put one up for sale on Facebook Marketplace. I love Facebook Marketplace. It's where I need to redeem time, because I often just scroll through Facebook Marketplace, looking for things that I'd love to have. <laughs> I can't remember where I'm going with this story, though. <laughs> I'm almost out of time as well. Anyway, we need to make room in the shed because we've got some bikes. So I put this one up on Facebook Marketplace and um, I put it up at a reasonable cost. Thinking, you know, it's, it's all right. It's probably not that good. So don't want to get, don't want to try and get over the amount for it, you know. A um, friend of mine that I haven't seen for years and years and years called Justin Pride. Some of you will know his, his mum and dad. He's just come back from the States. He's been on a ministry training thing over there. Literally, haven't seen him for years. He, he messaged me, he said, is that bike still available? As soon as I saw him, I knew I had to give that bike to him. The battle in my heart for the money was great. I've got to be honest with you. It often is. And it's just a bike, it's an old bike. And I just knew I had to give it to him. He came round. We had just a wonderful chat, catching up, talking about old times, hearing about where he is now. He's got a job over at God First now in Christchurch. It's fantastic. God has blessed him and blessed him and blessed him and blessed him. Why? Because he he'd gone out on mission for God in a huge way. And it was just a little thing that I was able to do, not for my glory, not because I'm generous even. I'm practicing generosity, but I want to do it more and more. Because I believe it's what's going to change others' perception of us, others' perception of God, and he gets the glory. And we are building for eternity in this place. All of this stuff, time, treasures, and talents, it is building for an eternity with him. And it's so hard for us to grasp that what happens here on this life is going to have eternal value. 
But God today wants to give us revelation of what we do here counts, of what we do every day, of how you use your time, of whether you use your gift or not, whether you will give generously into his work and for his kingdom will warrant what your eternity looks like. I genuinely believe that. Lots of people want the life of Jesus, the peace and the, the power and the, you know, the freedom and the joy, but they don't necessarily want the lifestyle of Jesus. How do we do this finally? We do it by becoming like Jesus. This is discipleship. We adopt the lifestyle of Jesus. He was busy, but he was never hurried. He always had time to be in God's presence. He made time to go and do it. He took time aside, but he was always with people too. And in that place, he was using his gifts. Yeah, he had loads of them. He had all of them. Words of knowledge and prophecy and teaching that was, came with such authority. Friends, let's not squander what God has given us on the trivial. Let's invest all that God has given us for the eternal. And one day, we will hear that from Jesus himself as he says, well done, good and faithful servant. Come in, enter into my presence. Understand my glory and know your ultimate joy. Let's stand together. I believe God wants to help us respond just in these moments as the band are playing. I genuinely God wants to work in hearts this morning. It's time. It's time over here for some of you to recognize that you are not investing your time wisely. And there's so much more for you. And I want to ask you even now, start coming forward. We're going to do all of these three. And I believe there's something in you responding in faith this morning doesn't mean that it's all going to go away. It means that you're going to put these small steps into practice that are going to break long-term habits and some addictions, I believe, this morning as you begin to take steps of faith and to walk out and say, I'm walking into a redeemed time for you, Jesus, today. Start to come forward over this side, in the middle here. It's talents. It's gifts. You know today as I spoke those words that you used to have gifts. You used to utilize them. But now you've buried them. And God's been digging up in the spirit this morning your gifts for the common good. And if you know that's you, then start to come forward here into this just space in in here, talents. I believe he's going to unlock new gifts for you today. Even as I've said that, you like, that's me. What could God give you? The gift of healing, the gift of miracles, the gift of generosity, the gift of hospitality. It needs to, we need the gift of hospitality in this day. Start coming forward. Come and get prayer in this space. And then treasures over here in this corner. You know that if you were honest, you're believing the lie that you're happier when you have the next thing and you can't think about anything else really until you've got it. And you know that it's interfering with your life and your life with God. God wants to break that lie over you this morning. So come, let's respond to him. 
Let's respond. Let's respond in faith as you do. Believe that He's going to come. He's going to minister in your heart. And He's going to start a process of change today as you determine that you're going to redeem whichever tear is for you for His glory and your joy. Father, help us, God. We need help. We need your Holy Spirit. Give us an eternal perspective. Lord, for those that have responded, Lord, I pray, would you meet with them, Holy Spirit? Perhaps as you convicted them, rightly so, God, of where they're at, as they repent and say sorry, Lord, would you flood their hearts with a glimpse of the eternal and such courage by the power of the Holy Spirit to make a change in their life. All for your glory.